environment. If you're working in a regular barn style setting with an indoor arena or an outdoor arena or manage, it's worth trying to create an autism and child friendly environment within there. So you take a corner of that school, put in trampoline, put in branches cut from the forest, put in a rug to roll around or put in armchairs, sofa, da da da. All of that can then be taken out at the end of the session, at the end of the day, when you want to go back to your jumping or your dressage. But that way your arena becomes a sensory and autism and child and family friendly environment, not a great echoey, intimidating space where unspecified mysteries of the horse cult go on. <laughs> um, but there is this other thing to consider, and so there are two ways to look at autism, and this is the final thing, it's really the most important thing of everything. Is, is I ask this question, is autism a problem to be fixed, or is it a set of skills and gifts? You look at Rowan right now, is that a problem to be fixed? It appears not, no, I mean he, he's highly productive, he's making little books, he's making little films even. Um, He's academically exactly where he should be, he's completely engaged in the world, but he has this lack of ego, which is very restful for me because I have such a giant ego, so that when I'm around him, I don't have my ego reflected back at me, I get a break from my own ego, which starts raising the question of, well, who is the therapist? And when I'm trying to teach my horse to do something, and he goes softer because Rowan's up there with me, or another kid is up there, well, who's the trainer? So the boundaries between all these things get blurred. The important thing is that you are in service to autism, you're in service to the families and you're in service to the dreams of these children and the dreams of these families. Whether it's to be free from stress or whether it's to ride horses or whether it's to go to Africa or whether it's to do whatever. And I'll give you, it's a weird thing, the moment I stopped resisting the autism and started asking myself, well, what if this is the adventure? What if this is the biggest adventure of all? And who's to say it can't be the most beautiful adventure of my life? The moment I started asking that question, it started to happen. So not only did we end up doing the trip across Mongolia, and there was this amazing result and so on, which was better than we could have predicted, it went on from there. So I ended up making a film. I'd never made a film before. The film went to Sundance. The film went into cinemas. I was like, we were amazed, you know. Um, because of that, I got hired to write a Hollywood film script of a film that I've had in my head since I was 18, and I was always too embarrassed to approach anybody hey, about. Yes. Are we going to get some exotic animals? We are going to get some exotic animals. I want to get blue wildebeest and kudus. What do you want to get? No, um, you don't have more. Dad, do you know the place where they sell buying and selling? There, there are auctions where they do that in Junction, Texas. Can we go there? We sure can. Can we go there today? We can't go there today because they're not having them, but we could look at the on the calendar and see when they're next having them. And maybe but go to they them. might have exotic animals for sale at the... At, um, there may be other auctions. And you know what? Why don't you get online and we can go see where other wildlife auctions might be. So that kind of conversation that you just thought had that I never thought that would happen in a million years. So but back to this this dream. So I was way too embarrassed to approach anybody. But suddenly because we'd made this other film and now there's this producer interested, I rather kind of embarrassedly said, Well I've got this other film idea and he just said, Get me a treatment and the next thing was okay, we're paying you to write the script. And suddenly this dream that I'd had since I was a little boy was being brought into fruition because I was following Rowan's dreams. Not because I was trying to follow mine. So I have this kind of... Um, I have this uh, theory almost about them, about people on the spectrum. Because I'm not the only parent I know who's had this kind of experience. Um, a lot of people I know, once they've really embraced the autism, have gone on to do all sorts of extraordinary things and have come to much happier places in their lives mm -hmm. and places where they've you know, been fulfilling the dreams of childhood. It's worth asking yourself this question, what, 
were my, what are my dreams? What were my dreams? What are the dreams that I had when I was six years old? You know, they get buried under the weight of human experience. They get buried under disappointment and they get buried under, gosh, just the day-to-day -day of life. But when you were six years old, everybody in this room had certain dreams that were completely personal to them that you may or may not still know what they are. What were they? It's worth getting in touch. It's worth yourself, if you can't even remember them, it's worth asking yourself that question. What are my dreams? And pretty soon they start coming back. If you put yourself in service like this, what happens is I find that the people on the spectrum are like dream whisperers. And you're familiar with the idea of the dream catcher, maybe, you know, which is that Native American thing, you hatch it and it catches it. Well, what do you do with the dream once you've caught it? Now, what do you do with a horse once you've caught it? You have to tame it. You have to whisper it. You have to, you have to gentle it. You have to, you have to whisper it into something that you can ride, so you can then ride the dream. It seems to me that these kids are dream whisperers for all of us. And if you go into service to them, they will open the door to your dreams whatever those are. I can absolutely guarantee that that's what they'll do. So it's worth just taking that away with you when you're asking, well, why am I doing this on a personal level? Because it's very, very likely that the dreams that you've had since childhood, which have not yet been fulfilled, are going to be fulfilled because of this. And that's it.